What's up, people? Welcome back to Shed Show. Thank you for being here. So today, I'm going to tell a personal story from my personal life. Since the dawn of time, wait, no, not that long. Since I first conceptualized this show, it was my intention to share personal stories. Most importantly, the stories that are difficult to share, like hearing someone talk about something that you can relate to is therapeutic, and especially if it's the kind of thing that people typically don't openly talk about. So I will be sharing those kinds of stories in this series, but I also decided not to restrict myself in any way as to what stories I'm gonna share. So, so to open up the series, I thought I would tell a story that's not too emotionally heavy at all. It does have some intense moments, but unless you're like extremely squeamish with injury type stuff, this should be a fun one for everybody. Oh, where to begin, where to begin? So after high school, I bought a van and lived in it and traveled these United States. After like a couple years of doing that by myself, I pretty much stayed exclusively in Portland, Oregon. And uh, I made some great friends, two of whom I lived with, uh, Nick and Chuck who were both starting State College when we met. So my van came in handy helping them move in and then we ended up just moving my ass in there too. Uh, they were great, love those guys, big shout out. Something else the van was good for was group outings, you know, day trips. So how do I put this? My friend Micah had to pick up some silly cyber from uh, Eugene, Oregon. Plus, there was a little music festival happening at the college down there, so a group of us decided to go. It was me, Micah, his girlfriend Shelby, someone else I'm definitely forgetting, and Nick, one of my roommates. See, Nick actually had college finals the next day, but he insisted on going, which was probably like an impulsive, stress-induced decision. I mean, why take a trip the day before your final? But anyway, I didn't have a final or even a class to speak of, so once Nick took the wheel, I was in the back drinking, having a good time. That was a great van. I don't want to say I miss it because, I mean, she gave me everything she had. So I guess instead I just say, rest in peace, van. Thank you so much for all of your service. Anyway, we get to our destination about tree, tree churdy, something like that. The festival was kind of a bust. It was hot as balls, and uh, the bands had shade on stage, but there was literally no shade anywhere for the audience. And I mean, that's a terrible design for an outdoor mini music festival. I don't know, that may not be relevant, but if I remember something, I will include it because my memory is not great. Actually, it's freaking horrible. But suffice it to say, we pretty much just walked around and uh, drank all day and into the evening. So as night falls, we end up being invited to this dude's house that, I mean, apparently someone in my group knows. Uh, his house is basically in the woods, which is kind of cool, but, well, okay, see, Micah and I had procured a fifth of whiskey, and when the two of us get together, we kind of just go into our own little world, and. Yeah, I, I assumed dude wasn't feeling our vibe, but he had bad vibes, and uh, the dude whose house we're at. And freaking, at one point, God, I'm sorry I don't have better context for this stuff, but, but at one point this dude grabbed me and Micah's heads and like clunked them together. <laughs> we weren't feeling that at all, so we elected to chill out like in the garden area on this bench. And uh, all the while we're just working on this bottle, laughing, having a great time. At one point, the dude actually comes out and yells to us to stop making noise. And at this point, we just tell him to fuck off. And uh, he did in fact fuck off. By the time Micah and I decide to go inside and join our friends, literally everybody is passed out. Our people are all in the living room, like right when you walk in, just snoozing. So we opt for the porch, and I remember at this point the bottle was close to empty, and something about things ending and just everyone being asleep and us really not feeling welcome, it just wasn't right. And then we are suddenly called to the wild. The forest beckons. 
just a couple of soul brothers, bottom of the fifth, in a beautiful dark forest. It's amazing how getting just like a hundred or more miles away from light pollution changes nighttime. There was a sliver of moon and stars illuminating our way. <laughs> Hold on. I don't want to make it sound like we hiked all like deep into this forest and shit. We definitely did it. Because before long, we came upon this tree, this massive tree, a tree with huge low branches that like gave it a clearing in the, in the dense forest. And it was mostly covered in this like soft spongy moss and the low branches made the perfect seating for us to finish this bottle. We were just chilling like, like Mowgli and, well, I guess another Mowgli. Yeah, just being cradled in this beautiful tree. The sky was just beginning to go from black to that deepest dark blue. And how this story should have ended is we polished the bottle, we watched the beginning of the sunrise, and uh, we head back to the house and pass out with our friends. But it didn't end that way, did it? Because see, this tree had other qualities, by which I mean it was a fantastic tree for climbing. And climbing trees was something I always did from childhood, so I didn't even think twice about it. I just started easily making my way up these enormous mossy branches. I believe Micah voiced some concern as I got higher and higher, but I don't know, I just kept going. So I got almost to the top before the branches were no longer big enough to ascend with ease. Because um, I did feel I was being careful, but uh, I was entirely too comfortable. That can be a problem. <clears throat> so I'm standing on this branch, standing upright, and using smaller branches at shoulder level for stability, I walked upright out on a branch, and uh, kind of just to get a clearer view of like how high I really was. And the ground was just like soaked with dark blackness. I couldn't really tell where it was. Anyway, I'm walking out on this branch and as I took a step, I reached for my next support branches, right? And one of them was big and thick and covered in moss. So I, I guess I felt I could lean onto that one a little bit. And um, despite it being thick, it, just tore apart. It was filled with just rot, and I couldn't tell because of the moss. And my balance went forward just that little bit too much when you can't get it back. And I fell toward the blackness. Because I was so far out on this limb, I didn't hit anything on the way down, just a clean plummet. And uh, the fall was long enough that I remember thinking like, a, how bad this might be, and even lamenting my upcoming summer plans being in jeopardy because I had uh, curated and booked this amazing warehouse show. And yeah, I was falling for so long, I was actually thinking about stuff like that. The ground, like I said, was very dark and it was hard to make out exactly where it was. And I remember expecting impact, like a full second early and um i honestly think that that mixed with me being drunk uh, let, let's be dramatic and say it saved my life it, it very well could have but it definitely helped but i did make impact the ground was there it wasn't a black abyss it was a hard ground and i landed like this on my chin and my chest right here and fucking i accordioned I definitely went out for a second. I remember everything kind of just going black and then having like a flash of white. So I was out for like one second, but I came right back and I was very, very much awake and without a unit of oxygen in my body. It was like getting the wind knocked out of me on a cellular level. <laughs> I f figured out as you do when you get your wind knocked out that you just have to relax. And I swear it took two full minutes before I got that first breath. It was crazy. In which time Micah had quickly made it to my side and was understandably freaking out. He was just like, I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. Like, are you okay? Talk to me. I thought you were dead. 
And this is the part of the story that I call denial. I insisted that I was gonna be fine and we just needed to go pass out. Like I was literally trying to trick reality into thinking this was a dream. Like I said, we weren't far at all from the house, like maybe 70 yards, 100 yards at the most. And the process of getting me up to the house was crazy slow. Like I was messed up. But we get there, so I lay down like in between Nick and Kimberly and Micah goes and snuggles with his girlfriend on the couch right there. And I close my eyes and I mean, I had drank so much, so, so much. I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna pass out. Like I'm definitely gonna pass out. I mean, everyone is soundly sleeping. Like this is relaxing. I'm still faded as fuck. So like just pass out, right? I laid there like really trying to fall asleep, but slowly as the booze wore off and that pain was setting in, it became more and more hopeless that I was gonna be able to sleep this off. The pain in my chest was becoming unbearable. Like I could only take very shallow breaths or else I would get very sharp pain. This is the end of the part of the story that I call denial. So yeah time to spring into action. The task before me is unfortunate, but it's simple enough. I have to wake up my friends and get taken to the hospital. I hate waking people up, but you know, I gotta do what I have to do. So I say, hey guys, except I don't say anything because I can't use enough breath or strength to actually make a sound with my voice. And every failed attempt means another sharp pain searing through what little buzz I have left. Kimberly and Nick are literally right next to me on either side, but I can't move. I can't fucking move. For those hours that I had been lying there trying to sleep, I was just laying still. And at this point, my body had stiffened to a fucking board. So I'm in a really shitty spot. We were all drinking super heavy. Everybody is passed the fuck out around me and I am in 10 out of 10 pain. I had to force out what little sound I could hundreds of times, hundreds of times, until finally Kimberly starts kind of like groaning and grunting back. And slowly she eventually became awake enough to understand what I was trying to communicate but everything was just slow moving. I mean, all I had was a pained whisper to influence anyone or anything. <sighs> so Kimberly got up, someone else woke up to help me get into the van, and then Kimberly drove me to the hospital, dropped me off into their care, and went back to sleep more. Big shout out to Kimberly for getting me there. So Eugene is like a small town and I swear this hospital was like the most chill place ever. Nothing fancy, like pleasant colors. But anyway, here I am and I swear to God, I am the only patient in this hospital. Like staff were all surrounding me in the emergency room, eager and excited to help. It was amazing. My nurse was this very loving and compassionate man. He, he was so concerned about how much pain I was in, especially as they put this neck brace on me and positioned me for an x-ray. It was just a nightmare. Every movement was horrible. But they get the chest x-ray, after which he quickly like whisks me off to my own room and uh, asks me if I had ever had morphine before, which I had not. I had actually never had any opiate before at that point. He's hooking it up to my IV, and as he's doing so, he says something like, oh, this is gonna make you feel good. And holy shit, y'all. I felt it enter my bloodstream and just like rush through my whole body. It felt like my body was a flushing toilet. Suddenly, two large men, not, not nurses, but fuck. They, car they carry shit, they help carry patients. Damn, it's a vital position in a hospital. I cannot remember the name of the job title. Anyhow, apparently the doctor had glimpsed the chest x-ray and now wants a back x-ray, like now. So suddenly I'm getting wheeled back to the x-ray room and I shit y'all not, in transit, 
that rush, that flush puts me out. I get flushed into just blackness. I get flushed into the abyss. And then next thing I know, I'm waking up in the x-ray room on the floor. The two guys are just looking over me, just looking very concerned. And as they lift me off the floor, I can feel that I pissed. And they get me on the bed, and sure enough, my gown is soaked in the pee pee. But the pee pee is red. So when they stood me up for my back x ray, I collapsed and had a seizure and was frosting at the mouth, and I pissed blood. So the priority now, from what they tell me, is internal bleeding, which I was scared. I thought they were going to stick all these tubes in me, but it was actually pretty chill, not very invasive at all. They basically were just monitoring me, and uh, I think this went on for a few hours. I was sleep, falling asleep and whatnot, and it was somewhere in this time that they informed me that I had fractured my sternum and two of my ribs. So then my friends kind of start showing up and uh, immediately all I'm hearing about is Nick's college final and how we had to leave. And I'm like, uh, okay, but like, I don't know. And it just keeps getting more and more pressing uh, to where it's like they're 100% gonna leave me behind <laughs> and take my own van. I'm like, no, no, like, fuck that. Like, let's go then. You know, the staff strongly discouraged me from leaving and I was told countless times to go straight to the emergency room if I did have to go. And I'm like, I do have to go. We have to go back to Portland. And they're like, okay, like, make sure your neck is secure and you're comfortable for the drive to Portland and go straight to an emergency room. They gave me a big bottle of painkillers and suddenly I'm in the front seat of my van plodding on down the road. And I mean, I was getting out of it. I do remember every small bump being a painful nuisance. So maybe somewhere along that drive, I don't know, I must have decided that I just really didn't need to go to the hospital. I certainly didn't want to. But here's the thing. It, all I can feel is the pain in my chest. And there was nothing to be done for that uh, except just rest. I mean, they already told me that. The pissing blood thing, I mean, it made sense for something to get a little ripped or like torn inside, but like, you know, I wasn't concerned about the internal bleeding too much, basically, which I think was a safe assumption. Actually, no, <laughs> no, I made the wrong choice. I, I didn't go to the hospital. I should have, but I just went home, went straight into bed and really didn't move for weeks. I fucking ate those pain pills, watched funny stuff on TV, pissed in jars, and occasionally uh, took a shit, which was never a good time. By the way, those summer plans that I was worried about while I was falling, they were all unfortunately canceled. As my chest was healing, I do recall noticing a bit of a sensation in my lower spine but I mean the recovery process was just so slow and long and the pain just seemed really like generalized like my entire torso was just fucked uh, but shit you read the title so three years later I accompany a family member to a spine doctor guy who is also their close friend and uh so Doc asks me about my back, and I'm like, yeah, it's always kind of hurt ever since this accident I had, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, did they x-ray it? And the thing is, they didn't. They didn't x-ray my back. When they went to x-ray my back, I had a seizure because my nurse basically overdosed me on morphine so I didn't get my back x-ray so he's like all right shit let's fucking x-ray it so we get to x-ray and uh, as we return to the room from the x-ray room he is just like fixated at the image in his hand 
and he puts it on the light box and he's just studying this x-ray and uh, then he speaks and he's basically just like you are extremely lucky to be able to walk and he shows me that one of my vertebrae had been broken and what had happened is when I accordion like I said two vertebrae smashed into each other and broke off to the side like that and at this point I mean you could still clearly see it uh, even though it was you know it was fossified and stuff but yeah you could just see that the two vertebrae slammed together and just created this like kink and uh, you could see the fracturing on the top one and you, a little like chip of it like just floating which I guess is fine like a little bone fragment just broke like a little one little one but it was like floating off uh, but uh, yeah I broke my spine and I didn't even know it <laughs> haven't climbed anything since so okay that's all I got for now peace I also bit the sides of my tongue off and uh, broke a bunch of pieces off my teeth. So like my molars are like a fucking jagged nightmare. <laughs>